Hey, I have a question for you. Does McDonald's serve burgers? Because I've just been going there for their soda. I'm just kidding. This is empty. I go there for the toys. We're going to do some long division today, and this is what we are going to use to help us remember our steps. D, M, S, B. Does McDonald's serve burgers? I need to know. All right. These are the steps you're going to follow to um, divide this number. And long division is something you're going to use for a very, very long time. So it is absolutely worth the time and effort to learn how to do it. And it just takes practice. For almost everyone that I've met, long division seems, seemed really hard and scary. And it was seemed impossible. And then you do it your sixth time, seventh time, eighth time, ninth. And all of a sudden, one day, it's just going to click. And you'll just get it. And it really just takes repetition. So you really just have to put in the work, practice it, do the steps. And before you know it, you will have it down and it won't seem hard or scary anymore. This is the standard algorithm. And basically, I always like to draw myself a fact triangle just so I can really see what it is I'm doing. I'm taking this number 684 and I'm dividing it by 6. And as you know, division and multiplication are related. So we are going to be multiplying a lot because we're really trying to figure out six times what will get us up to 684. Do you want to skip count your sixes till you get to 684? Six, 12, 18. You could. It would take a very long time. So we've got some steps, some kind of shortcuts to do that. All right. This number, the one that's getting divided up, is called the dividend. And the six, the one that it's getting divided by, let's say I have 684 brownies and I'm dividing them onto six plates. The six is called the divisor. And the answer in division, whatever our answer is, is called the quotient. That's a fancy word. So just like in multiplication, how the answer is called the product, and in addition, the answer is called the sum in division. It has a fancy word. The answer is called the quotient. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. We are going to divide, multiply, subtract, bring down. And here's how that looks. Our first step is just to look at one digit at a time. Just do the six. That's all you got to do. And basically, we are going to see how many times can six go into six. In other words, we're taking our red six here and just the six. Divide six by six. So instead of doing 684 divided by six, just do six divided by six. Well, six divided by six is one, right? So we'll put a one at the top, right there. Okay, so we did our divide. Our next step is to multiply. And I like to put a little multiplication symbol right here to remind me that I'm going to multiply. So now we're gonna do one times six equals six. And we'll put that down at the bottom. Our next step is subtract because if we have anything left over, then we wanna make sure that we're working with that. Six minus six is zero though. So we don't really have anything left over here. And our next step is to bring down. So we'd bring down the eight. So if we had a one, this would be an 18 we're working with. Or if it was a two, it'd be a 28. But it was a zero, so we're just working with the eight here, all right? So now we're gonna start over. So we did all these steps, we brought down our eight, we're gonna go back up to divide. And this time we're going to do eight divided by six. So we're just kind of going down the line here. So we did our six and this is where we are now. So in other words, if I drew another triangle, it would look like this. Now we're trying to figure out what is eight divided by six. So can you do six times something to get close to eight? Yeah, you could do six times one equals six, right? It gets you pretty close. Let's do that. Six can only go into eight one time. You know, you can't do two. That gets you up to 12 and you can't go past it. So six times one is eight, okay? Or eight divided by six is one. Now we're going to multiply it out. So that's what that's for. Now we go one times six, put it down here. So we're kind of following the line here. 1 times 6 is 6. Okay, we divided, we multiplied. Our next step is to subtract to figure out what we're working with here. 8 minus 6 is 2, so we have a 2 left over. Okay, that was subtract. Our next step is bring down. So now we're going to take the 4 and bring it down. 
So we're now left with 24. Not 4, not 8, because you have this 2 left over. You have 24 left over. So now we go back up to the top, and we're going to divide. So we are now going to do our last bit, which is 24, divided by 6. What is 24 divided by 6? Think about your times tables. If you're not sure, look at a times chart or skip count your 6s. But 24 divided by 6 is 4. So that was our divide. 24 divided by 6 is 4. So that goes up here. And the next step is to multiply it out to check that there's no remainders. So now we're going to multiply. 4 times 6 equals 24. Now we'll subtract and there's no remainder, so it went in evenly. This is our answer, but especially if you're new to long division, I need you to check it slash prove it. So here's what I mean. We said 684 divided by six was 114. Well, if you're right, if that's true, then six times 114 better be 684. So I want you to check your work. So let's do that, 114 times 6, and we can check it with any strategy, but I'm going to use a standard algorithm. 6 times 4 is 24. 6 times 1 is 6, plus 2 is 8. 6 times 1 is 6. There we go. 6 times 114 is 684, and 684 divided by 6 is 114, and that's how you use the standard algorithm.